In this video, we'll look at fancier ways to make types instances of type classes, defining our own type classes, and defining recursive types. Here's the definition of the type quad, which represents a 2x2 two two matrix. A is a type parameter here. Quad is like a generic class in Java or a template in C++. We can make a quad of ints, a quad of strings, or whatever we want. Put another way, quad is a type constructor, which can be used to construct any number of concrete types. The value constructor, which happens to have the same name, takes four arguments, each of type A. Here's the constructor in use. How did Haskell know to print the quad in two rows? We told it by making quad an instance of the type class show. This type constraint says that a particular concrete type quad A is an instance of show only if type A is itself an instance of show. For example, since function types are not instances of show, neither is a quad of functions. The part after where defines the show function for quads. It's similar to a two-string method in Java. We also make quad an instance of the functor type class. In Haskell, a functor is a data structure that can be mapped over. Note that the word functor has different meanings in other programming languages and in mathematics. Here's an example using a quad as a functor. We can define our own type classes. Here's the floppable type class for types whose values can be flopped in some sense. I was originally going to call this flippable, but a flip function is already defined in the prelude module. Do you remember what flip does? More importantly, do you remember how to look it up? Let's say that flopping a quad means transposing it, that is, flopping it across the diagonal. We can also make an existing type an instance of our type class. This says that for lists, flopping means reversing. We'll end with a more complex example, defining arithmetic expressions. The expression type has three different value constructors. Literal takes one value of type t. Variable takes one value of type string. Operation takes a string and a list of expressions. The expression type is therefore recursive, like a linked list. Here's an example. This expression corresponds to the mathematical expression 2x plus 1, or to this tree. We defined our show function to display the expression in parenthesized prefix notation. This notation happens to be valid code in Lisp. You should take the time to work out how the last line of show works. You might have to look up intersperse. To evaluate an expression, we have to supply values for any variables. Y isn't actually used in this expression, but throwing it in there did not cause a problem. To define eval f, we first define a socialist as a type alias for a list of pairs. Notice that this type has two type parameters, k and v. k stands for key, v for value, and a socialist associates keys with values. eval f takes an expression t and an socialist associating strings with t's, and returns a t. Because we intend to perform division, the type t must be an instance of the floating type class. For a literal, evalf just returns the value stored in the literal. For a variable, it looks up the variable in the table. The lookup function is defined in the data.list module. For an operation, evalf decides what to do based on the value of op. The values to be combined are found by recursively calling evalf on the operands. Haskell's laziness is helping us out in a subtle way here. If we ask for 
Then in the last pattern for eval f, rands is a list of one expression, literal 10. The definition of b tries to get the element of index 1, but there is no such element. This would be a problem, but since the case for log doesn't use b, b's definition is never evaluated. Since expression is a type constructor rather than a concrete type, we can make other kinds of expressions. Eval b evaluates Boolean expressions. We're flirting with building a full-blown programming language interpreter here. We'd better stop before we get too excited.